Hey there, it's Lindsay Bowden, and in this video lesson, I'm going to go over some basic geometry terms. So let's talk about some definitions first. So the first word we are going to go over is point, and the definition for that is a dot with no size. And I know that may say, sound a little weird, a dot with no size. It just means it's only a location. It only represents a location. It doesn't actually take up any space. And here is a point right here. A lot of times a point will be named using one capital letter, so point A. All right, a line is a figure with no thickness. So again, it doesn't necessarily take up space. And it extends forever in opposite directions. So it's always going to have arrows on both ends. All right, the next word is plane. And a plane is a flat surface. that extends forever in all directions. So it keeps going forever in all directions. All right, the next word is a line segment and a line segment is a piece of a line with two endpoints. So it'll always have two endpoints. All right, I'll give you a second to catch up if you are writing these. I'm gonna scroll up just a little bit and go ahead and go on to Ray. So a ray is very similar to a line segment. It has an endpoint, but then it extends forever in just one direction. So it's a piece of a line with one endpoint It extends forever in one direction. All right, I'm gonna scroll up here. You can always pause the video if you are still writing and catch up if you need to. All right, the next word is an angle and an angle consists of two rays that meet at a common endpoint. And that common endpoint is called a vertex. All right, so here's one ray, here's the other ray, and then the point where they meet, right here, that's called the vertex. Our next term is parallel lines, and those are lines that intersect, sorry, lines that never intersect but they are in the same plane. Alright, and parallel lines will usually have some kind of block arrow to indicate that they are parallel. And then the last word on this page is perpendicular lines, and those are lines that intersect to form four right angles. So they intersect at 90 degree angles. And that's what that little box represents. 
Okay, so let's get into how we name these. All right, so a point is named using one capital letter. So for example, this is point M. All right, you can also write it like that, which looks just like the figure. The next one, a plane is named using three points that lie within the plane or one capital cursive letter. All right, so you can name this plane ABC. If you switch the order of these, it does not matter. So this is the same thing as plane BCA. The order doesn't matter for the points. You can also name it using the capital cursive letter that'll be usually in the upper right hand corner of the plane. So this would be plane L. All right, lines. Lines can be named using two points that fall on the line. And the symbol for a line looks just like a line. It has two arrows. It can also be named using one lowercase cursive letter. Okay, so for an example down here, this is a line. And I'm going to name this line JK and I'm going to put the line symbol on top. You can also name it KJ. The order of the letters does not matter. If there is a lowercase cursive letter on one of the ends of the line, then you can name it using that too. So I can write out the word line and then use that lowercase cursive letter P. All right, a line segment can be named using the two endpoints And the symbol for a line segment looks like that. It does not have points on the actual symbol. So for the line segment down here, ST, I can name it ST or TS. But notice I didn't put points on the end of my symbol. You just put one straight line. All right, and then a ray can be named using two points. And the symbol for ray looks like that. The arrow always points to the right. Now, array, the order of the letters does matter. For a array, you always start with the endpoint. So in this case, that's L. And then you just put one other point that lies on the array. And the arrow always points to the right, regardless of how the array actually faces. All right, so let's go over a few more examples. So what if you have more than one point to choose from? So for example, in this line, I have five different points. It doesn't matter which two points you choose, and it doesn't matter the order that you put them in. So I can name this line AB. I can name this line CE. I can name this line DB. There's lots of other options as well. So as long as you pick two points that are on the line, you are good. Make sure you put the correct symbol on top. For a line segment, you must use the endpoints, so W and Z. However, it doesn't matter the order, you can write it either way. And then for a ray, remember, you must start with the endpoint, so I must start with M. Then you just choose one other point on the ray, it doesn't matter which one, so I could use MN or I could use MO. All right, and let's move to angles. So there are three ways to name an angle, and the symbol for angle looks like this. Occasionally, you'll see this. So both of those mean angle. Okay, so you can name the angle using just the vertex. So I can name this angle E. And of course, you could also use this symbol if you would like. This is probably the most common one, the first one. You can name it with a number. 
So occasionally on an angle, you'll see a number inside that has nothing to do with the degree measure of that angle. This is not three degrees, of course. It's just another way to name the angle, especially if you have a lot of angles in the same diagram. Sometimes a number is easier to use. So I can just name this angle three. And then you can also name it using three points. But you must remember that the vertex must be in the middle. So I can name it angle D, E, C, or angle C, E, D. But notice E, my vertex, is always in the middle. All right. So if you have this practice sheet, you can go ahead and pause the video now and complete that. And then I will scroll down and we will get into more geometry terms. So if you're going to do the practice, pause the video here. Okay, let's go ahead and get into these next set of words. So the first word is collinear, and that means points that are on the same line. And if you look at collinear, the word, that's exactly what it means. Co means together, like cohabitate means live together. And then you see the word line in here, so together on the same line. And then coplanar, same thing except for a plane, so points on the same plane. And coplanar can also represent other symbols or other figures that are on a plane. So it could also represent lines or anything that's on a plane. So let's make a little point here. It can represent other figures as well. So for example, I could have two coplanar lines that are on the same plane. Okay, and then non-collinear and non-coplanar would of course mean they are not on the same line or not on the same plane. So non-collinear means not on the same line, non-coplanar means not on the same plane. Remember, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video and you can get the definitions that you need to. Okay, the next word is bisect, and the noun for that would be a bisector, and that means to cut a figure in half, to cut into two equal pieces. So bisect means to cut into two equal pieces. The bisector is the actual figure that is doing that. So this here, this figure is bisecting this angle. It's cutting it into, oops, sorry. It's cutting it into two equal pieces. And that's what those angle congruency marks are indicating. This angle and this angle are the same. All right, the next word is midpoint, and that means the middle of two points. So this point here is in the middle of these two, and that's what these little congruency marks are indicating. This piece and this piece are equal. All right, the next word is skew lines, and those are lines that are in different planes that never intersect. So skew lines are different from parallel lines because parallel lines must lie in the same plane. Skew lines are going to be in two different planes, so it's not going to be two-dimensional, it's going to be three-dimensional. So for example, on this three-dimensional figure here, if this kept going and this kept going, even though they don't look like normal parallel lines, they are still never going to meet because they are in different planes. That's why they are called skew lines. All right, and then the next term is vertex, and that is where two lines, rays, or line segments meet. And it can also be more than two, or lines, rays, or line segments meet. 
And if you're talking about more than one vertex, then you want to use the plural vertices. So all of these are vertices. All right, and then if you have the next practice worksheet, you can go ahead and do that now. I hope this lesson was useful, and I will see you guys in the next lesson.